हेलो गाइस वेलकम बैक टू दी अन अकेडमी नीट पी जी लाइव चैनल आई एम डॉक्टर हिमांशु गुप्ता एंड आई हैव डन माय एम बी बी एस एंड एम डी फ्रॉम मौलाना आजाद मेडिकल कॉलेज सो गाइस टुडे इन दिस शॉर्ट लेक्चर वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस फ्यू इंपॉर्टेंट फ्रैक्चर्स फ्रॉम द सेक्शन ऑफ अपर लिम ट्रामा देन वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस फ्यू फ्रैक्चर्स फ्रॉम द सेक्शन ऑफ लोअर लोअर लिम ट्रामा एंड वी आर गोइंग टू सी हाउ डू वी have to identify those fractures right so guys let us begin let us begin with this session so guys coming to the first x ray coming to the first x ray so guys usually what do you see in this fracture okay what do you see in this fracture so usually students know that there are only complete fractures complete fractures okay but there is another category that i want you guys to know that is your incomplete fractures incomplete fractures okay so incomplete fractures are those fractures that will not involve both the cortices that that is not going to involve both your cortex okay these are known as incomplete fractures they are further of various types there are further of various types okay so in some patients what can happen what can happen these incomplete fractures these are most commonly seen in children these are most commonly seen in children right so there are three types of incomplete fractures that that are there okay so these include bowing bowing the first one is bowing the second one is torus okay torus in which you are going to find cortical buckling okay because of the bend of the bone okay the cortex on which side the cortex of that side becomes thickened the cortex of that side becomes thickened and guys the third type is your green stick fracture green, green stick fracture and what happens in green stick fracture so guys there is a disruption involving only one side of the cortex okay the other side of the cortex if you can see here the other side of the cortex it is normal it is normal so these are your three three types of the incomplete fracture incomplete fracture now guys try to have a look at this x ray x ray of the ankle joint x ray of the ankle joint in the lateral view lateral view what do we see here what do we see here so this is a special uh, group of fractures that we should be aware about special group of fractures that we should be aware of okay anyone anyone who can identify what is the abnormality with this x ray anyone who can identify what is the abnormality with this x ray come on guys so what do we see here this is your talus this is your calcaneum this is your tibia this is your fibula okay so i want you guys to take part in the discussion and help me in coming to an answer and help me in coming to an answer guys so guys this is a special type of fracture that is involving your growth plate growth plate that is involving your growth plate okay and along with the fracture of the growth plate okay there is fracture involved there is also fracture of the metaphysis of the tibia there is also fracture of the metaphysis of the tibia okay so this is a fracture of the growth plate plus okay plus a fracture involving your metaphysis involving your metaphysis okay so we are going to group it into a, into the salter harris group of fractures salter harris group of fractures which are going to involve our growth plate salter harris group of fractures which are going to involve our growth plate so guys we should be aware about the classification salter harris classification theek okay? hai so uh, there is a simple mnemonic with which you can remember with which you can remember the salter harris classification so it stands for salter salter okay s a l t r so h stands for s stands for a fracture involving just the growth plate a fracture involving just the growth plate okay so s stands for slip okay there is slippage of the growth plate slippage of the growth plate so the type one includes which is a fracture involving just your growth plate e stands for above a stands for above fracture involving the growth plate plus the metaphysis plus the metaphysis l stands for lower l stands for lower 
which uh, which means that there is a fracture involving the growth plate as well as a fracture passing through the epiphysis fracture passing through the epiphysis then guys in the in the type 4 in the type 4 we have a fracture through and through fracture through and through fracture involving the metaphysis growth plate and your epiphysis okay and r is r is crushed fracture crushed fracture okay compression fracture of the growth plate okay there is compression there is compression of the growth plate compression of the growth plate so are we clear about the salter harris classification so it is used for fractures involving the growth plate s stands for through and through fracture passing through the growth plate a stands for fracture involving the metaphysis l stands for lower involving the epiphysis and the growth plate t stands for through and through fracture through the metaphysis uh, your growth plate and your epiphysis and r stands for crushed fracture crushed fracture of the growth plate so guys this is how we take a normal normal ap view ap view ap view of the shoulder joint okay so the patient is lying down with his hands by by his sides with his hands by his sides so now let us try to identify what are the normal structures what are the normal structures we are seeing on the on the shoulder joint okay so help me tr help me identify the various structures that we are seeing here help me identify these various structures that we are seeing here so i'm labeling the structure a b c and d okay so guys can you help me identify what all are these structures that have been labeled as a b c and d what are all these structures that have been labeled as a b c and d anyone guys what is the structure that has been labeled as a what is the structure that has been labeled as a in this image come on guys anyone guys what is the structure that has been labeled as a in this image so guys the structure that has been labeled as a in this image is your acromion process a is your acromion process b is your clavicle b is your clavicle c is the coracoid process c is the coracoid process and d is your head of the humerus d is the head of the humerus right and the joint between the head of the humerus and your scapula this is your glenohumeral joint space glenohumeral joint space which is not very well visualized in this ap view which is not very well visualized on an ap view okay and this is your normal coracohumeral distance okay which is normally less than 13 mm coracohumeral distance which is normally less than 13 mm and this is your acromioclavicular joint okay so these are all the normal structures that we have to look for on an ap view ap view of the shoulder joint okay and also have a look at the at the symmetry of the head of the humerus symmetry of the head of the humerus remember that the head of the humerus appears asymmetrical in shape asymmetrical in shape okay so i will tell you what is the significance why we have to see that the head of the humerus is asymmetrical in shape i will tell you the significance as we move forward with this lecture okay so guys there is another view that we can take okay by rotating the patient uh, by rotating the patient 40 degrees okay so in this what what happens your glenohumeral joint space is very well visualized glenohumeral joint space is very well visualized okay so is my voice voice and uh, video clear to you guys voice and video clear to you guys just give me a thumbs up
okay great great so guys what what happens what happened in the previous x-ray in the ap view we could see that your glenohumeral joint space was very not very well visualized not very well visualized okay so what we had done what we had done we had rotated the patient by more than 40 degrees and we could see that in this view we could see this glenohumeral joint space very well okay so if we have to see if there is any posterior dislocation of the shoulder posterior dislocation of the shoulder so what will happen your glenohumeral joint space glenohumeral joint space it will decrease okay so in your posterior dislocation glenohumeral joint space it will decrease okay so that will only be well visualized that will only be well visualized if we are taking this extra view for this patient that is your gracia view gracia view right so moving on to the another special x-ray that is done for the shoulder joint special x-ray that you should be aware okay so what is this special x-ray that is that is done for this patient it is your y view y view okay so in this again the patient is rotated uh, by more than 20 degrees he is lying prone on the x-ray table and x-ray beam is directed along the scapula x-ray beam is directed along the scapula okay so this x-ray is used this x-ray is used to see to see any fractures within the scapula okay if you will take up orthopedics you will do a lot of these views okay and this x-ray this x-ray helps to see any fracture involving the scapula any fracture involving your scapula will be very well visualized on this y view on this y view now guys moving on to the another x-ray moving on to the another x-ray so this is an x-ray of the right shoulder what are we seeing here what are your observations for this x-ray guys what are your observations for this x-ray this is an x-ray of a 14 year old child do you find any abnormality within this x-ray do you find any abnormality within this x-ray anyone guys can you find any abnormality within this x-ray so guys this is this is so many of the students think that this is a this is a fracture involving the growth plate okay this is a fracture that is involving the, uh, that there is a fracture in the head of the humerus okay but i want to tell you that this is just a this is just the normal appearance this is just the normal appearance of the growth plate normal appearance of the growth plate okay now moving to another x-ray okay moving to another x-ray okay again this is an x-ray of the shoulder joint x-ray of the shoulder joint what are your observations what are your observations for this x-ray of the shoulder joint anyone guys very simple question very simple question what are your observations for this x-ray of this shoulder joint can you find any abnormality within this x-ray of the shoulder joint so very good very good ruby very good ruby so here we can see that your head of the humerus head of the humerus it it has come in a sub coracoid location sub coracoid location okay so guys which is the most common most common dislocation of the shoulder most common dislocation of the shoulder most common dislocation of the shoulder is so the most common dislocation of the shoulder is your anterior dislocation anterior dislocation okay so here what has happened okay the head of the humerus it has displaced anteriorly okay and it has come to lie in a sub coracoid position sub coracoid position very good okay which is the nerve which is the nerve that is injured in this patient which is the nerve which can be injured in a patient with anterior dislocation of the shoulder nerve which can be injured in an anterior dislocation of the shoulder anyone which nerve can be injured in the anterior dislocation of the shoulder it is it is your 
come on guys which nerve can be injured in the anterior dislocation of the shoulder joint it is your axillary nerve axillary nerve right then guys moving on to a ct image a ct image of the shoulder joint a ct image of the shoulder joint what has been shown to you here what has been shown to you here ct image of the shoulder joint what is being shown to you ct image of the shoulder joint what is being shown to you guys what are your observations what are your observations this is your scapula this is your scapula this is the head of the humerus what are your observations in this ct image of the shoulder joint come on guys i am giving you some time to think about it and i want some answers in the in the live chat anyone guys what is happening here so guys here we are seeing we are seeing that the head of the humerus head of the humerus it is again again head of the humerus it is again dislocated anteriorly head of the humerus it is again dislocated anteriorly okay and after dislocation what we are seeing that the posterior surface okay it has impacted on to the glenoid labrum okay anterior labrum so this posterior surface of the head of the humerus it has impacted on to the impacted on to the head of the humerus okay and because of this impaction because of this impaction of the head of the humerus what we are seeing what we are seeing that there is some wedge shaped defect wedge shaped defect in the posterior lateral part posterior lateral part of the head of the humerus wedge shaped defect in the posterior lateral part of the head of the humerus what is this wedge shaped defect known as wedge shaped defect in the posterior lateral part of the head of the humerus what is this known as guys which happens in anterior dislocation of the shoulder joint wedge shaped defect in the posterior lateral part of the head of the humerus so guys this is known as this is known as hill sacks lesion hill sacks lesion theek hai hill sacks lesion basically it is a defect in the posterior lateral part of the head of the humerus okay and what else what else okay this anterior dislocation of the head of the humerus anterior dislocation if this is your glenoid glenoid cavity okay and this is your glenoid labrum okay this let me draw it with a white pen if this is your glenoid labrum okay what will happen okay when this head of the humerus it will dislocate anteriorly it will cause it will cause disruption of the it will cause disruption of the glenoid labrum it will cause disruption disruption of the glenoid labrum okay and this dis disruption of the glenoid labrum guys this is known as disruption of the glenoid labrum is known as anyone what it is known as it is known as bancard's lesion bancard's lesion right now moving on to another x ray moving on to another x ray of the shoulder joint what do we see here guys what do we see here so i told you i told you when we are looking at the head of the humerus okay the head of the humerus has to be asymmetrical in shape asymmetrical in shape okay asymmetrical in shape but if you see that there is loss of asymmetry okay the head of the humerus looks very symmetrical in shape okay looks very round in shape okay so this is what we call as this is what we call as light bulb sign light bulb sign and this light bulb sign it is seen in light bulb sign it is seen in anyone this light bulb sign in the posterior uh, is seen in light bulb sign is seen in posterior 
dislocation of the shoulder joint okay so remember that just one x-ray is not enough for posterior dislocation of shoulder joint okay we'll have to do another view in which we can confirm that there is posterior dislocation posterior dislocation of shoulder joint light bulb sign okay now moving on to the moving so guys this is the trough line this is the trough line okay so when the patient has been reduced okay this is the trough line that is seen that is seen due to the impaction impaction of the head of the humerus impaction of the head of the humerus onto the glenoid labrum impaction of the head of the humerus onto the glenoid labrum seen in posterior dislocation of the shoulder joint seen in posterior dislocation of shoulder joint right so again coming to another x-ray coming to another x-ray so guys what are we seeing in this x-ray what are we seeing in this x-ray what are your observations what are your observations for this x-ray anyone guys who can tell me okay so guys in this in this in this image what we can see that there is a bony fragment okay bony fragment lying in the bony fragment lying in the glenohumeral gleno joint space okay bony fragment is lying within the glenohumeral joint space okay so this can be likely due to a fracture within the head of the humerus fracture within the head of the humerus now guys moving to another x-ray another x-ray of the shoulder joint so i want you guys to observe this x-ray very carefully observe this x-ray very carefully and try to come at a right answer try to come at a right answer so if you guys have understand understood the shoulder joint by right now you will be able to give the right answer for this x-ray okay let us see let us see who identifies who identifies what is happening here what is happening here anyone guys what is your what is your answer for this case anyone what are your observations what are your observations try to reply try to reply anything that you are aware that you are aware within the shoulder joint okay sorry i'll change the x-ray so try to identify what are your observations what are your observations for this x-ray anyone what are your observations for this x-ray so i will not move till you till you guys try to answer something okay i will not move ahead till you guys try to answer something kya lag raha hai aapko kya ho raha hai is x-ray mein any any abnormality that you can see in this x-ray no no deepak sharma there is no no posterior dislocation in this no posterior dislocation seen no posterior dislocation seen what else can you think of what are the normal things what are the normal things that i showed you on shoulder joint what are the normal things that i showed you on shoulder joint guys what are the normal things that i showed you on shoulder joint very good very good jatin sharma you are little bit near you are little bit near so guys can you appreciate 
कैन यू अप्रीशिएट दिस इज दॉर्ड दिस इज दोमियन प्रोसेस दिस इज द्लैविकल दिस इज द्लैविकल ओके सो वट इज हैपनिंग इन दिस केस वट इज हैपनिंग इन दिस केस दैट द अक्रोमियन एंड द क्लैविकल अक्रोमियन एंड द क्लैविकल दीज आर नॉट लाइंग इन द सेम लाइन अक्रोमियन एंड द क्लैविकल दीज आर नॉट लाइंग इन द सेम लाइन ओके सो देर इज अक्रोमियो क्लैविकुलर डिसलोकेशन दैट इज हैपनिंग हेयर अक्रोमियो क्लैविकुलर सेपरेशन ओके डिसलोकेशन और सेपरेशन इज वॉट यू कैन सी इन दिस एक्सरे ऑफ द शोल्डर जॉइंट राइट एंड वॉट एल्स वी कैन सी हेयर वॉट एल्स वी कैन सी हेयर दैट द कोरेको दैट द डिस्टेंस बिटवीन द क्लैविकल ओके क्लैविकल एंड दॉरेकोड प्रोसेस ओके कोरेको क्लैविकुलर डिस्टेंस कोरेको क्लैविकुलर डिस्टेंस इट इज मोर देन थर्टीन एम एम सो वेन द कोरेको क्लैविकुलर डिस्टेंस इज मोर देन थर्टीन एम एम यू कैन से दैट दिस इज अ केस ऑफ दिस इज अ केस ऑफ दिस इज अ केस ऑफ एनी वन आई वॉन्ट एवरी वन टू रिप्लाई आई वॉन्ट एवरी वन टू रिप्लाई दिस इज अ केस ऑफ अक्रोमियो क्लैविकुलर डिसलोकेशन डिसलोकेशन राइट सो नाउ गाइज कमिंग टू दी एल्बो जॉइंट एल्बो जॉइंट ओके सो गाइज दिस इज दिस इज अ नॉर्मल एक्सरे अ नॉर्मल एक्सरे ऑफ दी ऑफ दी एल्बो जॉइंट ओके सो गाइज वॉट आई वॉन्टेड टू टेल यू इन दिस एक्सरे ओके सो इफ यू इफ यू आर गोइंग टू ड्रॉ अ लाइन अलॉन्ग द एंटीरियर ह्यूमरल सर्फेस ओके इफ यू आर गोइंग टू ड्रॉ अ लाइन अलॉन्ग द एंटीरियर ह्यूमरल सर्फेस एंटीरियर ह्यूमरल सर्फेस ओके सो गाइज दिस लाइन शुड पास थ्रू द कैपिजुलम दिस लाइन शुड पास थ्रू द कैपिजुलम ओके इफ यू आर ड्रॉइंग अ लाइन अलॉन्ग द एंटीरियर ह्यूमरल सर्फेस दिस लाइन शुड पास थ्रू द कैपिजुलम एंड एट लीस्ट एट लीस्ट वन थर्ड वन थर्ड ऑफ द कैपिजुलम one third of the capitulum one third of the capitulum one third of the capitulum should lie anterior to this line one third of the capitulum should lie anterior to this line okay so this is this will help us this will help us okay if if one third of this uh, capitulum okay one third of the capitulum is not lying anterior to this line One third of the capitulum is not lying anterior to this line. Then, guys, we are going to suspect a fracture. Okay, so we are going to suspect a supra condylar fracture of the humerus. Supra condylar fracture of the humerus. Okay. Supra condylar fracture of the humerus. Okay. So, guys, this is another interesting X-ray. This is another. ओके नहीं लीनियर फ्रैक्चर नहीं है ओके सो दिस इज अनदर इंटरेस्टिंग इंटरेस्टिंग एक्सरे इंटरेस्टिंग एक्सरे आई वांट यू गाइस टू हैव अ लुक एट इट ओके एंड टेल मी व्हाट आर योर ऑब्जर्वेशंस व्हाट आर योर ऑब्जर्वेशंस फॉर दिस एक्सरे व्हाट आर योर ऑब्जर्वेशंस फॉर दिस एक्सरे क्या दिख रहा है आपको इस एक्सरे में एनी So anyone, guys, what is your observations for this X-ray? Who will tell me what are your observations for this X-ray of the elbow joint? X-ray of the elbow joint.
so guys if you if you would have studied about the appearance of the ossification centers around the elbow joint appearance of the ossification centers of the elbow joint okay so they can be remembered with a simple mnemonic that is crito crito okay crito so where c stands for capitulum appeared appears at one year of age radial head appears at three years of age medial epicondyle five trochlea seven olecranon 9 and external epicondyle 11 years of age okay so this are this is the age of appearance of the ossification centers around the elbow joint ossification centers around the elbow joint so here we can see that the ossification center for capitulum has appeared okay and many of you this is the lateral side this is the lateral side and this is the medial side so many of you guys get confused can get confused that this is the ossification center for the lateral epicondyle this is the ossification center for the lateral epicondyle but guys this is not an ossification center for the lateral epicondyle this is what i wanted to teach you okay if you can see if you can see this mnemonic okay ossification center of the lateral epicondyle ossification center for the lateral epicondyle it will appear after the ossification center for the medial epicondyle theek okay? hai but here in this image we can see that the ossification center for the medial epicondyle has not appeared okay so guys this this cannot be an ossification center this cannot be an ossification center for the medial epicondyle this will not be an ossification center for the uh, lateral epicondyle rather rather this was a case of fracture of the fracture of the lateral epicondyle okay fracture of the lateral epicondyle right right so this is a fracture involving your lateral epicondyle okay so here again guys here in this x-ray i just wanted to tell you one more thing okay one more thing that the fat planes okay the fat planes the fat planes appear displaced okay the fat planes around the elbow joint they are displaced okay so this is due to if you can see that there is some radiolucency around the around the elbow joint there is some radiolucency around the uh, elbow joint this radiolucency this radiolucency is due to this radiolucency is due to anyone this radiolucency is due to the displacement of fat pads displacement of fat fat pads okay and displacement of fat pads has occurred because of because of effusion around the knee joint okay effusion uh, uh, effusion around the elbow joint and guys one of the cause for the effusion can be a fracture can be a fracture so there can be a subtle fracture a subtle fracture involving involving your elbow joint so we cannot rule out the possibility that there is no fracture no fracture in this in this uh, elbow joint theek okay? hai so guys moving on to the next x ray moving on to the next x ray what are your observations for this x ray of the elbow joint what are your observations of this x ray of the elbow joint anyone observations for this x ray of the elbow joint what are you seeing here anyone anyone who can tell me your observations for this x ray of the elbow joint so guys i told you that in case of elbow joint what you have to do okay we have to we have to draw a line along the anterior humeral surface anterior humeral surface and guys this line this line has to pass through the capitulum this line has to pass through the capitulum okay so when this is not happening okay so when this is not happening okay when the uh, anterior humeral line it is not passing along the capitulum then guys we are going to suspect a case of 
supra condylar fracture supra condylar fracture okay so guys what is the classification system that we are going to use in supra condylar fracture of the humerus supra condylar fracture of the humerus what is the classification system that we are going to use what is the classification system that we are going to use in supra condylar fracture of the humerus anyone guys the classification system that we are going to use it is your gartland classification gartland classification theek hai for the fracture of the head of the humerus okay fracture of the head of the humerus what is the classification system that we are going to use for the fracture of the head of the humerus for the fracture of the head of the humerus which classification system we are going to use anyone guys for the head of the humerus the classification system that we are going to use is your near classification near classification very good very good theek hai and guys which is the most commonly nerve injured most commonly nerve injured in a case with supra condylar fracture of the humerus most common nerve injured in a case of supra condylar fracture of the humerus most common nerve injured is your is your anterior interosseous nerve anterior oh sorry median nerve median nerve okay so median nerve is very commonly injured median nerve is very commonly injured in a case with supra condylar fracture of the humerus fracture of the humerus okay so now i am going to tell you one more one more point okay one more point so what are your observations in this x ray what are your observations in this x any any abnormality that you can see here guys any abnormality that you can see here okay so guys in this x ray we can see we can see that the anterior this a line drawn through the anterior radial surface a line a line drawn through the anterior radial surface should cross this should cross this capitulum should cross this capitulum so if this line if this line along the anterior radial surface is not crossing the capitulum then guys we are going to suspect a case of radial head dislocation we are going to suspect a case of radial head dislocation okay radial head dislocation right so this was the case of radial head dislocation dislocation so this is a named fracture named fracture that you guys should be aware of named fracture that you guys should be aware of who will tell me what is this fracture that is being shown in this image okay which is this fracture that is being shown in this image anyone which fracture is being shown in this image which fracture is being shown in this image very good very good deepak okay so the fracture that is being shown in this image this is your this is your montegia fracture montegia fracture okay so what happens in case of montegia fracture what happens in montegia fracture okay so there is fracture of the ulna there is fracture of the ulna and fracture of the ulna and dislocation of the dislocation of the radio ulnar joint dislocation of the radio ulnar joint theek hai this is what you are going to find and which is the most commonly nerve injured most commonly nerve injured in uh, montegia fracture this is your posterior interosseous nerve posterior interosseous nerve the classification that we are going to use the classification system that we are going to use is your bedos classification 
Bedo's classification for Montegia fracture. Okay, so guys, before I move ahead, I want to tell you a few things. So guys, we have a lot of free tests that are coming up. Okay, so they are going to take place on March 29, March 29, 2022. Okay, surgery test. Then we have March 30. Okay, we have a test that has been created by our Nikita Nanmani ma'am. Then on March 31, on March 31, we have a previous year question test series. Okay, mixed bag MCQs that you guys should attempt. Okay, so we are also launching this previous year question bank, previous year question bank, and uh, these are the other courses that we are that we are coming up. Okay. So guys, if you are in, if you are in final year or third year or M, okay, in internship, you can go for this iconic subscription, iconic subscription. Okay. So guys, the benefit of this iconic subscription is that you will get, you will get the best of both the unacademy as well as prep letter. So you will get the recorded lectures on prep letter and you can take the advantage of the live classes through the unacademy. Okay. So guys, uh, I always believe that you know these live classes this will definitely be helpful to you okay so in these live classes guys you get a chance to you get a chance to you know ask your doubts ask your doubts with the teacher which is not possible in an offline class okay which is not possible in an offline class so this is the best advantage okay and guys the number of lectures that are taking place on the unacademy even the free lectures also free as well as the plus lectures that are taking place on the unacademy this has never happened in the in the medical education okay so i would definitely ask you guys that if you have any four to five subjects week okay so many students ask me sir mere teen char subject week hai three to four subjects are week i'm not able to improve my marks so guys i would suggest you that for those three to four subjects okay we have uh, teachers who are taking classes every day for each and every subject so guys for those three to four subjects attend those classes of those teachers okay in the subjects that you are weak at and I can definitely make sure that you are definitely you are definitely going to improve you are definitely going to improve once you start attending these classes okay and uh, guys I have a coupon code which you can use to avail few discounts also okay so you can use this code and a lot of toppers are coming who have used this platform and and they are going to come up in the future as well and many more toppers are going to come in the future okay which 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 will be a game changer in your preparation game changer in your preparation okay so i would definitely ask you guys ki you go for this plus subscription at least a two or three month subscription you can go for taken if not for the one year or not so these short subscriptions are also available i think and you can go for this subscription and we have this uh, another amazing batch that is coming up okay neat pg 2022 okay high yield theory revision batch okay so you know it will take place from march 32 march may 15 and it will cover your most important topics okay most important topics so guys i would i would ask you that you that you go for the plus subscription and join this high review high yield revision batch high yield revision batch okay so now guys moving on to the moving on to the fractures of the wrist fractures of the wrist okay so guys what do we see what do we see here what do we see here in this image anyone what are your observations for this x-ray what are your observations for this x-ray So guys in this x-ray we can see that there is a Salter Harris 
सोल्टर हेरिस टाइप टू फ्रैक्चर ओके सोल्टर हेरिस टाइप टू फ्रैक्चर इन्वॉल्विंग योर ग्रोथ प्लेट एंड दी मेटाफाइसिस सोल्टर हेरिस टाइप टू फ्रैक्चर इन्वॉल्विंग योर ग्रोथ प्लेट एंड योर मेटाफाइसिस ठीक है सो फ्रैक्चर इन्वॉल्विंग योर सोल्टर हेरिस टाइप टू फ्रैक्चर इन्वॉल्विंग योर ग्रोथ प्लेट एंड दी मेटाफाइसिस ऑफ दी रेडियस ऑफ दी रेडियस ओके सो अनदर एक्स रे अनदर एक्स रे ऑफ दी Another X-ray of the wrist joint. Another X-ray of the wrist joint. What do you see in this X X-ray of the wrist joint, guys? What do you see in this X-ray of the wrist joint? What do you see in this X-ray of the wrist joint? Come on, guys. What do you see in this X-ray of the wrist joint? Anyone, guys, who can tell me what are your observations for this X-ray of the wrist joint? So let me tell you. Let me tell you. So, guys, in this there is a fracture, fracture involving your distal end of the radius, fracture involving your distal end of the radius, fracture involving your distal end of the radius. Along with that, guys, okay, you can see, you can see that there is. dorsal displacement okay there is dorsal displacement of this uh, fracture segment dorsal displacement of this fractured segment theek okay? hai dorsal displacement of this fractured segment okay so why this dorsal displacement of the fractured segment fracture of the distal end of the radius and fracture of the ulnar chiloid process fracture of the ulnar chiloid process okay so all these three things all these three things these are component of these are component of your colles fracture these are component of your colles fracture theek hai so normally colles fracture hum bas yahi yaad rakhte hain fracture hota hai distal end of the radius ka and there is dorsal displacement so there are few things that we need to know dorsal displacement kis cheez ki dorsal displacement of the distal fract fracture segment and there is fracture of the ulnar chiloid process also so guys when this fractured segment when this fractured segment it is displaced anteriorly this fractured segment is displaced anteriorly it is known as smith fracture smith fracture or reverse colles fracture reverse colles fracture now guys which is the most common bone most common carpal bone to get fractured most common carpal bone to get fractured the most common carpal bone to get fractured it is your scaphoid bone scaphoid bone okay and just remember just remember that the supply of the scaphoid bone scaphoid bone is from distal to proximal okay so the uh, arterial supply of the scaphoid bone is coming from the uh, distal end then to the proximal end so what happens okay in the fracture of the scaphoid bone there is disruption of the disruption of the blood supply to the proximal part disruption of the blood supply to the proximal part of the scaphoid which can result in which can result in a vascular necrosis a vascular necrosis of the scaphoid a vascular necrosis of the scaphoid clear then guys moving on to the next x ray moving on to the next x ray what are we seeing here so in the previous x ray i will show you that this is your scaphoid bone this is your lunate bone okay so lunate has a trapezoid shape has a trapezoid shape okay if we if we are looking if we looking uh, at the ap view of the wrist joint okay so when this when this lunate bone lunate bone it takes a triangular shape it takes a triangular shape okay then we are going to think of then we are going to think of lunate dislocation then we are going to think of 
unit dislocation unit dislocation right so other ways to look at the unit dislocation is to get a lateral view is to get a lateral view so what do we see in this lateral view okay if we draw a line okay uh, through the capitate okay so the line will pass through the uh, metacarpal capitate lunate and the radial radius radial head radial head okay so a line will pass through all these three things okay capitate lunate and the distal end of the radius so if somehow okay if we draw a line uh, through these three bones okay and one of the bone is not lying is not passing through this line okay then we are going to suspect a case of lunate dislocation lunate dislocation okay so guys what do you see in this x-ray what do you see in this x-ray of the wrist joint what do you see in this x-ray of the wrist joint kya dikh raha aapko is x-ray mein of the wrist joint anyone guys what do you see in this x-ray of the wrist joint what are your observations for this x-ray of the wrist joint observations for this x-ray of the wrist joint come on guys anyone so let me tell you so guys if you can observe if you can observe the intercarpal joints anything any abnormality between the in the intercarpal joints intercarpal joint any abnormality that you can see in the intercarpal joints no there is no intraarticular fracture of the distal end of radius just look at the abnormality in the intercarpal joints any abnormality that you can see in the इंटरकार्पल जॉइंट्स इंटरकार्पल जॉइंट्स में कुछ एबनॉर्मेलिटी आपको दिख रही है या नहीं सो गाइस आई विल टेल यू दैट नॉर्मली द जॉइंट स्पेस बिटवीन द इंटरकार्पल जॉइंट्स जॉइंट स्पेस बिटवीन द इंटरकार्पल जॉइंट्स इट इज लेस देन टू एम एम so here you can see that the joint space between the scaphoid and the lunate bone scaphoid and the lunate bone it has increased the joint space between the scaphoid and the lunate bone it has increased okay so this is a case of this is a case of scapho lunate dislocation scapho lunate dislocation and the scapho lunate dislocation it is also known as it is also known as terry terry thomas sign terry thomas sign theek okay? hai so this this scapho lunate dislocation it is also known as terry thomas sign so guys what are we seeing in this x ray lateral view of the wrist joint what are your observations for this lateral view of the wrist joint your observations for the lateral view of the wrist joint kya observations hai aapke for this lateral view of the wrist joint so guys in this in this x ray we can see that your lunate bone lunate bone it is displaced okay it is displaced anteriorly unit bone is displaced anteriorly unit bone is displaced anteriorly and and we can see that your capitate lunate and your radius these are not lying in one line these are not lying in one line okay so this is a case of lunate dislocation lunate dislocation okay so there is another similar case okay in which lunate will remain at its normal position whereas less rest of the bones rest of the carpal bones rest of the carpal bones 
will displace posteriorly rest of the carpal bones if you can see that the relationship between the unit and the head of the humerus is maintained whereas rest of the carpal bones these are displaced dorsally okay so in which the case in which unit remains at its own position whereas the rest of the bones are displaced posteriorly this is known as this is known as the case of peri unit dislocation peri unit dislocation so this is this is a uh, an x-ray showing a fracture of the fracture of the what is this x-ray showing what is this x-ray showing guys what is this x-ray showing anyone anyone what is this x-ray showing what is the name of the fracture that is being shown here what is the name of the fracture that is being shown in this image no this is not the boxer fracture okay this is a fracture involving the base of the thumb okay this is a fracture that is involving the base of the thumb this is a fracture that is involving the base of the thumb right a fracture involving the base of the thumb okay base of first metacarpal okay first metacarpal so that is not very clear in this image okay so you cannot tell whether this is the first metacarpal or the fifth metacarpal so even even a boxer fracture i would give you the right answer so boxer fracture is the fracture of the fracture of the fifth metacarpal fracture of the fifth metacarpal theek hai so boxer fracture is the fracture of the fifth metacarpal and here we can see that there is fracture of the uh, uh there, there is this is not a comminuted fracture this is just a single fracture line that can be seen passing through the base of the first metacarpal if this would have been a comminuted fracture if this would have been a comminuted fracture of the first metacarpal comminuted fracture of the first metacarpal then guys we would have called it as a case of we would have called it as a case of anyone rolando fracture rolando fracture theek hai then guys moving on to the knee joint moving on to the knee joint okay so in this x ray guys we can see we can see what are your observations first tell me what are your observations for this x ray of the knee joint any observations for this x ray of the knee joint come on guys so guys i will tell you okay so guys there is basically your blood fluid levels okay uh, sorry fat fluid levels that can be seen in this in this image fat fluid levels that can be seen in this image so this is your fat that is that is uh, lying above the above the blood okay above the blood okay so <coughs> fat fluid levels can be seen in the in the knee joint okay so guys why why are we having this fat fluid levels okay so just remember that your fat appears radiolucent fat appears radiolucent on an x ray and why are we getting these fat fluid levels guys just remember that the only fat only fat only fat that is liquid at room temperature only fat that is liquid at room temperature it is your 
only fat that is liquid at room temperature it is your marrow fat marrow fat theek hai so whenever there will be fracture around the knee joint there will be a fracture around the knee joint what will happen a break within the cortex of the knee joint a break within the cortex of the knee joint it will result in oozing of this marrow fat it will result in oozing of this marrow fat okay and when this fat will uh, and when this fat will float over the fluid as well as blood it will give this fat fluid levels and this is known as lipo heme arthrosis lipo heme arthrosis okay so these fat fluid levels will be seen in a fracture subtle fracture around the knee joint so we will have to look at this fracture very carefully very carefully okay so guys here we can see that there is a subtle fracture of the lateral aspect of the uh, lateral aspect of the tibia so guys such injuries should not be ignored because they are also associated with injuries of the medial collateral ligament okay acl okay so these subtle fractures fracture of the lateral aspect of the tibia fracture of the lateral aspect of the tibia is known as sigon's fracture sigon's fracture so what we have to know what we have to know that these subtle fractures of the lateral aspect of the tibia should not be ignored okay these can be associated with the ligamentous injuries ligamentous injuries okay so in this x ray of the x ray of the ap view of the knee joint ap view x ray of the knee joint in the ap view we can see some bony fragments bony fragments okay in the uh, joint space bony fragments can be seen in the joint space okay these bone fragments these are nothing these are but the avulsion these are due to the avulsion avulsion fracture caused by the acl ligament okay avulsion fracture of the caused by the acl ligament okay avulsion fracture caused by the acl ligament right so we have to look at the joint space very carefully we have to look for any bony fragments within the knee joint knee joint now tell me guys what are your observations for this x ray of the knee joint what are your observations for this x ray of the knee joint anyone what are your observations for this x ray of the knee joint tell me guys what are your observations for this x ray of the knee joint no good will surgeon this is what i want you to teach you through this x ray so guys this is not a fracture of the patella so just remember that the fracture of the patella are always horizontal or vertical okay so fracture of the patella are rarely oblique okay so this is a normal variant this is a normal variant of the patella normal variant of the patella which is known as by pertight patella by pertight patella this is nothing but just a normal variant of patella normal variant of the patella so in this image we can see that there is there a horizontal fracture and there is a vertical fracture of the patella of the patella now guys moving on to the next x ray moving on to the next x ray what do we see in this x ray what do we see in this x ray guys anyone what are we seeing in this x ray so guys in this x ray we can see we can see that there is a fracture fracture of the medial malleolus okay fracture of the medial malleolus okay so just remember that this is due to the inversion in inversion injury of inversion injury is causing is causing this fracture of the medial malleolus and you know this is the classification system that we use for this uh, ankle injuries for this ankle injuries is your weber classification weber classification theek okay? hai so weber a weber a tells us that this fracture is lying 
below the below the telar dome okay below the telar dome and the syndesmosis between the tibia and the fibula it is spared syndesmosis between the tibia and fibula is spared okay in type b in type b okay there is there is involvement of the syndesmosis okay syndesmosis between the tibia and fibula and type c there is a high fracture of the fibula as well high fracture of the fibula as well ठीक है high fracture of the fibula as well okay so guys in this in this image we can see that there is the widening widening of the uh, joint space between the tibia and the fibula and the and the uh, tibia and the talus okay widening of the joint space between the tibia and the fibula as well as tibio talar joint okay so in this case we have to see we have to take up uh, we have to take an x ray of the knee joint as well so what was found within the knee joint that there was an associated fracture associated fracture of the proximal end of the fibula there was an associated fracture of the proximal end of the fibula and guys this is known as this is known as mesenuber fracture mesenuber fracture theek hai mesenuber fracture right right so guys uh, tell me what what are your observations for this x ray what are your observations for this x ray so this is this is this is a fracture that is involving your distal end of tibia fracture involving your distal end of tibia theek hai and this is a fracture involving the epiphysis also epiphysis also okay so this is a fracture involving the uh, involving the epiphysis of the tibia as well as growth plate okay so this is a salter harris salter harris type 3 type 3 fracture salter harris type 3 fracture and along with that guys this is this is also known as this is also known as telox fracture telox fracture theek hai salter harris type 3 fracture hai also known as telox fracture and in aviator fracture avi, uh, avi, aviator fracture there is fracture of the uh, talus there is fracture involving the talus theek hai so guys let us discuss one more x ray one more x ray anyone what are your observations what are your observations for this x ray what are your observations for this x ray guys anyone what are your observations for this x ray so guys in this x ray we can see that there is a fracture involving the calcaneum fracture involving the calcaneum theek hai fracture involving the calcaneum okay and in calcaneal fracture guys we have to calculate one angle that is known as bollard's angle we have to calculate one angle that is known as bollard's angle okay so three superior most points okay on the calcaneum these are joined okay and these lines are joined with each other okay if the angle between these two lines it is less than 20 degree then we are going to suspect a case of calcaneal fracture so calcaneal fractures is also known as lovers fracture lovers fracture theek hai lovers fracture okay so if the angle is less than 30 degree we are going to suspect it that it is a case of it is a case of lovers fracture so last case last case for today guys last case for today what are your observations in this x ray what are your observations in this x ray anyone who can tell me who can tell me their observations in this x ray
so guys this is uh, this is a fracture dislocation fracture dislocation of the tarso tarso metatarsal joint fracture dislocation of the tarso metatarsal joint fracture dislocation of the metatarso tarso metatarsal joint it is known as it is known as les franks fracture les franks fracture les franks fracture so guys here you can see that there is this there is fracture fracture line involving the uh, involving your uh, metatarsal as well as there is dislocation of the metatarsal tarso metatarsal joint okay this is known as this is known as les franks fracture theek hai so guys this was all for today i hope uh, you enjoyed this imaging session on trauma and radiology so if you if you like this lecture do give me a thumbs up and do leave your feedback in the comment section below till then guys bye bye take care keep working hard